smoke. What are we going to do? Okay, just chant this mantra. Follow this process. Read these books. Okay. So then they read and they do a little chanting and they do a little process. And then guess what happens? Somehow or other, all of a sudden, they get some money. And then, bye! They're out the door. All right, bye. <laughs> that's fine. We don't mind them leaving. That's, that's okay. That's okay. And then, let's see. Another person go, oh yeah. Then another person comes and he says, this is very strange. I don't understand this. I'm really smart. And I never met anything that I couldn't, I never came across anything I couldn't understand. I'm going to look into this. So they start reading all this stuff, right? And they're, all, they're always thinking in their mind, deep down in their mind, they're thinking, I'm going to find a shortcut. I'm too smart for this. See, I know better. I'm a wise guy. Huh? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this thing out, and I'm going to find a shortcut. And so they go through the books, and they're reading this, and they're reading that, and they finally read something that, like, clicks into place. And they realize, yeah, that's it. I'm Krishna. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and now we're really happy to see those guys go. <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah, by this time, the room is, oh, is practically empty. <laughs> huh? You know, like in our, in our, in our uh, video, the... 2012 Matrix Singularity, huh? It's like, have the stupid viewers left yet? <laughs> you know? Oh, looks like you're the only one. All right, sit down. We've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> so uh, why? Because all those other people took something very cheap, took something material in exchange for their service, and then they were satisfied. They got what they were looking for. See, devotional service is like a desire tree. Huh? There's a funny story about a desire tree, too. Huh? There was this traveler, and he was so tired and hungry and thirsty and lost in the forest. And, you know, he's wandering around, and he hears the calls of the wild animals in the distance, and he's very, very scared, you know. So uh, he finally, finally comes to this, this beautiful tree, uh, like a big banyan tree or something like that. And he's just so tired and so exhausted, and so completely famished, you know. He's, he's, he doesn't know, but this is actually a desire tree. So... He comes like crawling up to the tree and he goes, oh man, it doesn't have any fruit. Oh man, I'd give anything for a nice meal. What's that? He starts to smell this delicious food. And he looks around the back of the tree and here's this fantastic feast all spread out. And he's so, t he's so hungry, he like jumps on it. <laughs> Oh, man, that was good. <laughs> right? He just gorges himself, right? And then he goes, oh, man, that was great. Whew. Oh, now I just want to take a nap. Oh, I wish I had a nice, comfortable bed. And he, he looks around the other side, and then there's this beautiful bed, you know, nice sheets and pillows on it. And he just goes, oh, yeah, just falls into the bed, you know, passes out. Hours later, he... He wakes up, you know, it's the middle of the night, it's very quiet. He wakes up, oh man, that was the best meal I ever had. This is, look at this beautiful bed. And then he starts thinking, wait a minute, how did all this stuff get here? I'm in the middle of the forest. Uh-oh, I bet there was some ghosts. And all of a sudden, 
<laughs> oh no! Oh no! Man eating ghosts! <laughs> it was a desire tree. He got exactly what he desired, whatever he thought about, huh? whatever he thought that he needed to even to explain, you see, the, the existence of all this stuff. It manifested because it was a desire tree. A desire tree doesn't care what you desire. A de desire tree simply delivers whatever it is, see? So this process of devotional service is a desire tree. However you approach this uh, service or whatever you desire in exchange for your service, you will get. But be careful. Because if you desire something inferior, then you will get that. And you won't get the ultimate, highest thing. You see? You won't get the best thing that you can get from this process. You'll get something inferior, something less. Hmm? So if you come with some material desire, if you desire wealth or relief from suffering, or if you just are curious for knowledge, or you want to uh, develop mystic powers, or you, you want to merge with God, or you want salvation, or you want to go to heaven, or you want some material enjoyment, or any, any of those things, you can very easily get from this process. Very easily. Huh? In just a very short time, you can get all those things. But if you're satisfied with those things, then you will leave the process and you won't get the real benefit. Huh? Oh, there's another story I can think. I'm really into the stories tonight. <laughs> Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami, who wrote Nectar of Devotion. He was living uh, so he was so renounced that he just lived under a tree. In fact, he lived under a different tree every night in a place called Seva Kunj, Vrindavan. So one day, um, somebody gave him a touchstone. Now, you may not believe in touchstones, but uh, according to our tradition, a touchstone is a stone that when you touch it to iron or any base metal, it turns it into gold. Okay, the philosopher's stone, also known as philosopher's stone. So, Rupa Goswami, he got this touchstone as a donation from some rich man or some wizard or somebody. And he said, oh, thank you very much. And then when the man left, he threw it in the garbage pile. <laughs> huh? It didn't have any value for him. It didn't have any meaning for him. So he just threw it. So that night, a thief came. You know, there, in, in India, there are thieves everywhere, very poor people. And they, they go through your garbage and like that, seeing if there's anything they can sell or so he went through Rupa Goswami's trash, huh? and he found a touchstone. And he goes like, I'm rich. And he ran away. Huh? And the next thing you know, he's got this big house in Matra with servants and fine jewels and, and wonderful food. And he's getting drunk every night and smoking hookah. And, you know, whatever he wants, right? And he goes along like this for some time, and then he finally goes, wait a minute. The touchstone was in the garbage. The touchstone was in the garbage. That means he has something even more valuable that he didn't throw away. So, he 
next morning he goes out on, you know, he has a fine horse now and, you know, several guards and like this and everything, you know. So he just goes out to see Rupa Goswami and he comes in and he says, Rupa Goswami, how are you doing? <laughs> huh? Right? You know, Rupa Goswami, his reputation was dhira dhira jana priyo priyakaro. That he was beloved by everybody, even the, the saintly people and the not so saintly people. Dhira dhira. See? The, the dhira, the sober people, the saintly people, they loved him because he was so saintly. And the adhira, the, the, the rascals, they also loved him because he was completely like one of them. He was just down to earth, very honest, lived very, very simply.